teenage OGs remembering the metal. It's a series where I talk about, you know, vintage watches. We stopped it for a while. We had a lot of important things going on, but I miss it. You guys miss it. Michael doesn't miss having to make them, but we're reintroducing it a little bit, maybe once a month, but with a little bit of a different twist. How I pair vintage watches, well, a ton of watches, many of which are vintage, all of which are available in the Theo Harris watch shop, and I pair them with, uh, with my clothing. Well, real quick, this cool cat is brought to you by Squarespace. Do you need a website or a domain? Well, then Squarespace is the place to go. So if you're interested in that, we'll be talking more about it later, but you can use our code Theo Harris at checkout to save 10% off your first order of a website or domain. Because a lot of the watches that I chose to pick up were vintage and, and kind of formal, right? I wanted to show you guys that their versatility is almost unbelievable. Right? We're going to see some, some super fine dress watches. And frankly, I think this Brigade tradition is looking pretty good as well. Even though you'd never expect it with an outfit like this, right? This isn't a style uh, how-to video. This isn't a, I'm not becoming an influencer like in that way. It's just, uh, listen, watches are great. Vintage watches are great. And they're more versatile than we think. There are fewer rules than we thought. Uh, we're going to break down those barriers. So let's talk about vintage watches. Let's do it. My Brigade Tradition. Now, I love this watch. I've had it for about a year, but it's not, it's not quite what I want to talk about today. So I wanted to show it to you guys just because it is beautiful, right? And it's a very special piece to me. But I think, uh, I think the first watch I want to show you is maybe something from Rolex, something, something that was named after a friend of mine. Let's do it. This is a Rolex Buckley dial reference 16014. 014 means that it is a quick set watch. 18 karat yellow gold bezel, an 18 karat yellow gold crown, and, uh, and a two-tone uh, Jubilee bracelet, obviously. I love this watch. I find it to be incredibly elegant. It's sporty in a, in a very 80s way. I'm wearing espadrilles, I'm wearing a t-shirt. This watch goes great with all of it, but this is kind of a layup. I think you guys already know how to do this. So I think I want to show you guys something that is a little off the beaten path, something that maybe you guys wouldn't feel comfortable wearing, something that it takes a pair of uh, cojones to wear but it's super rare and super cool. Real quick, are you thinking, hmm, I really need a website or a domain? Well, then Squarespace is definitely the place to go. They have tons and tons of templates that you can use to design a website, whether it be showing off your photography or writing a blog or really just making a digital business card or resume. It's very easy to use. You don't need any experience and you can get a website going just like that. If that is something that you are interested, then head on over to squarespace.com slash Theo Harris to save 10% off your first order of a website or a domain. I highly recommend you do it. You kind of need a website in 2022. Okay, back to you, Big C. So, boom. Duo plan. Super rare watch. This is a ladies watch, absolutely. But I think it looks fantastic on my wrist. Again, I'm the kind of guy that wears vintage Cartier, that wears just vintage paddock, stuff that is small and delicate, and this watch is delicate, but I just think it's fucking amazing. I mean, this takes someone that is a little bit bolder, someone with a very distinctive taste. Where's the crown? Where's the crown, guys? The crown is on the flip side of the watch. So you have to wind it from the case back. It's just unbelievable stuff. So interesting and different. This is back when brands were doing stuff that was more interesting and different. Now they're just, by and large, reissuing stuff from when they used to do it, when it was more interesting and different. And it's, and it's not a Cartier tank, you know? I mean, equal prestige in that Jaeger, J.J. LeCoult is even more respected as a watchmaker than Cartier, but it's different and it's interesting. I, I adore this watch. 
you want to stay within the same theme of a dress watch, but maybe the dual plan was a little bit small for you, I get it. This is a vintage 1950s, late 1950s, maybe early 1960s, Universal Genève, uh, 14 karat yellow gold, enormous case. Reminds me a whole ton of the jumbo tanks and trays. Uh, basically an immaculate white, kind of ivory, kind of eggshell dial, uh, Roman numerals, and again, blued steel hands. Fantastic watch. I love the pole router. The pole router's Universal Genève's like most famous watch. I love them. But I think it's kind of cool that this isn't the obvious UG. It's super big for the era, incredibly tasteful. Uh, I wanted to wear this because I wanted to show you guys that when you're dressing casually, you can wear dress watches. Dress watches aren't just for suits. And how often are we wearing suits anyway? I haven't worn a suit in months, right? You can wear this stuff with t-shirts and jeans. I'm wearing espadrilles right now. You know, I'm wearing rolled up shorts. It's hot as shit. Doesn't matter. Listen, I know that I said that it was cool that the UG was a UG and the Jaeger was a Jaeger and it was cool that they both weren't Cartier. I feel that way, I really do. I also do understand, obviously, why a Cartier tank is so alluring. That's why I always have at least one, honestly, if I'm being honest with you guys, usually more like two or three in my personal collection at all times. Um, this is a gorgeous Tank Louis, 18 karat yellow gold. The dial, the white Roman dial, absolutely immaculate. The blue steel hands the same. This is a quartz model, which people ask questions about sometimes, like, oh, should you really be buying a quartz watch when you're in a luxury watch game? Well, for me, especially when it's a brand like Cartier, absolutely. You buy a Cartier tank because of what it means in a design sense to history, right? You, you buy a piece of the Maison, right? The Grand Maison, if you want to be kind of like a French doucher, you know? But it's true. They're the most brilliant designers of all time. If there's only one Cartier, if there's only one true Cartier tank, it's the Tank Louis. And I don't think there is only one true Cartier tank, but if there is one, it's this one. So, well, yes, alternatives are great. And I really believe in those watches, I really do. It is good sometimes to have the real McCoy. If you don't buy this watch, like now, I think Michael's going to. This is a Rolex date, reference 1500, which is the smaller date just, right? It has all the same qualities, but in a smaller 34 millimeter case. Now, the thing about Rolex 34 millimeter cases, if you've ever owned one, is that they're significantly larger than 34 millimeter cases from other brands, right? Like Paddock or Omega, for instance. These watches are thick and bulky, but what's so amazing about the design. Not only is it it's thick and bulky, but that it's oyster bracelets are so thin and elegant. And by the way, the condition on this one is just insane. Now, I still haven't, haven't even gotten to what's particularly interesting and beautiful and rare about this watch. I haven't even told you why I'm talking about this watch. It features a, a very rare Rolex trait. It's called a big logo. You almost never see this stuff. Never made on a date just, only made on dates and then on clasps of some vintage GMTs and Submariners. I've been buying and selling vintage Rolex, obsessing over vintage Rolex for eight years now. This is only, it is definitely the second, maybe max the third I have ever seen. That's how rare these are. And not only are they rare, which can be interesting, but they're distinctive. The Rolex print is fucking enormous, ladies and gentlemen. The hands aren't normal stick hands, they are Dauphine hands. They are these big, like, swords, right? And they're, they're, just, they're just gorgeous, they're different, they're distinctive. I don't know, I, you can get lost in Rolex details, right? The same way I can get lost in any kind of vintage nuance thing, right? Like, my radio is in German. I don't, even, I don't speak German, I've never, never worked this radio, you know, it's just, I mean, it's cool, it's just cool, er, what is UHR, it means hour, I guess, I don't know, why does it matter that this, that this Rolex print is so large, it's not better than the small print, it's not better, right, maybe it's a little more ostentatious, that's not going to make it better, but it's cool, and it's interesting, and it's collectible, it's all these little details, I'm a details guy, that's probably why I'm a vintage guy, and if you're watching this video, and if you've made it this far, you're probably a vintage guy or girl as well. So, uh, I only have one thing to say, I guess, is head on over to the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. Because, uh, boy, do we have some shit for you.